Being a chef is cool. Being a fighter is cool. But it also takes a lot of hard work. Additionally, it takes a lot of hard work to become a chef. So does that mean a fighting chef is the coolest profession that requires skill and practice? I've said before I like the concept of a chef in a fighting game. The use of food and cooking themed attacks always seemed so awesome to me, yet I felt like that type of character was rare. Well, apparently it's not that uncommon. While some of their fighting styles may not be cooking themed, plenty of fighters across many fighting games could be considered chefs when not on the battlefield. And that's what I'm counting down in this video. While not every character on this list is a bona fide professional chef, they at least have strong cooking abilities and could easily become a chef if they so desired. However, characters will be ranked higher if they are actual chefs and find a way to incorporate cooking into their fighting style. And they also have to be cool. So here are my top 10 chefs in fighting games. Number 10. Benimaro Nikaido from the King of Fighters franchise. While nothing about his play style or in-game quotes references cooking prowess, some of his bios list him as being an accomplished cook. Since very little is known about his cooking abilities, I cannot put him too high on this list. He's a professional model when he's not fighting, but if he ever gets tired of posing, maybe he could get to cooking. If he ever decides to pursue that career, he won't have to worry about his chef's hat falling off since it looks like it would fit snugly around his hair that is reminiscent of that Slim Jim mascot from the early 2000s. Number 9. Gorman from Power Stone 2 Power Stone was an unconventional fighter which utilized an arena-style format, but it's still considered a forgotten fighting game classic. Now, could you tell Gorman was a chef? I mean, they didn't make it obvious enough. He has entered the fight in the mysterious castle in the plot of Power Stone, because he wants to see if there is any new, rare cuisine to improve his cooking in there. He wields dual weapons, a cleaver and a frying pan. He can also form a pot below his opponents and burn food to use as a projectile. His title is Evil Chef, so I guess the malevolent shading around his eyes signifies evil, and the fact that he burns food on purpose. Gourmand's name is a pun, sort of. His name literally is a term for a person who enjoys eating and usually eats too much, so there's no actual wordplay. His parents just named him that, assuming he would join an industry that has to do with food one day. Also in Power Stone, every character has a power change ability, where they transform into a more powerful version of themselves. Gourmand turns into a dinosaur. Yup, that chef just turned into a dinosaur. Showing that his hat is also magic, since it was tiny just a second ago, and now it can stretch to fit the head of a dinosaur. I uh, think I'm done with this guy here. Number 8. Hisui and Kohaku from Melty Blood. This one's a bit difficult. Hisui, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is horrible at cooking, but fights with cooking utensils such as spatulas and frying pans. However, her twin sister Kohaku is excellent at cooking, but has more of a traditional witch fighting style that has nothing to do with food preparation. They are twin sisters who are both maids, so if Hisui did all the fighting and then called Kohaku to do all the cooking without telling me that they were two different people and switched places, I would have thought this was just a good cook who fights with food related items. If only they didn't have minor differences in their outfits to help us identify which twin is present. Then again, they can fight as a team, so there will be a good cook on the field with that duo. Since Kohaku is a maid who is terrible at housework, she should seriously consider a career in cooking. If that's her best trait and she's a maid, whose primary job would involve housework, maybe a trip to culinary school could lead her to a more fruitful career. And maybe Hisui should lend her sister some of those cooking tools she does not use for cooking purposes. I don't blame Hisui, though. If you're a terrible cook who should never go near an oven, you might as well put those utensils to some use, even if they are not being used for their intended purposes. It's probably the same reason why Kohaku, who is bad at housework, uses a broom as her main weapon. Seriously, they could just switch weapons after the match and play up their strengths when doing their maid work. 
Hmm, maybe they do that. I don't know what goes on when cameras aren't on them. Number 7. Yu Wan from Skullgirls. Yu Wan is a restaurant owner in the Skullgirls town, Little Innsmouth. He clearly has a very successful restaurant that he runs as the head chef, attracting people or more living organisms of all kinds, like humans, cat girls, and this guy. Yeah, I don't know what he is. The only issue with Yu Wan as a fighting game character is that he is not a playable or even computer only character. But he's in a fighting game. He's right here, in the background. Still, he had a chance to become a playable fighter with a speculated move set by the Skullgirls team. He just lost a fan vote. Twice. That would have allowed him to become a playable character. That being said, if he was to become a playable character, it was implied that the staff would give him a super move that involved him making some delectable dish. They also said rated E for edible, which is a line I've always enjoyed. Also, that's only an if he was playable scenario. So poor Yuan cannot rank any higher on this list unless he decides to enter the heat of battle with a meat cleaver as his sword and an apron as his armor. Number 6. Scorpion for Mortal Kombat. Yes, that Scorpion. Hanzo Hisashi, the ninja that wears yellow. I don't know how to make this any more clear. Back in 2002's Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance, a clip advertising an upcoming episode of a lesser-known TV program called Cooking with Scorpion was unlockable. This show was a standard cooking program with Mortal Kombat's very own Scorpion hosting it. We could learn basic to more advanced techniques for the kitchen, ranging from chopping to cake decorating. Look at this face. This is the look of someone who is passionate about his craft. Since I have the standard Earthrealm cable package, I never got a chance to see this show. I think it was only broadcast in the Nether Realm, maybe Outworld too. So I cannot say how in tune Scorpion was with his inner chef, but if he was talented enough to get his own show revolved around cooking, I can assume he's a pretty decent chef. Maybe that's why Quan Chi kept him around for so long. Alas, due to Scorpion's serious demeanor when fighting, he tends not to talk about his culinary skills in the heat of battle. However, since Scorpion was the leader of a ninja clan, along with being a father figure to Takeda all of his life, those cooking techniques likely came into good use when he had to feed dozens of troops. Number 5. Kirby and Super Smash Bros. Brawl When Kirby sucks at enemies, he gains their powers and skills. Common knowledge, right? So when he sucks in any chef characters from Kirby games, he gets one of his most fun abilities, Cook Kirby. In this, he summons a giant pot and absorbs all enemies in the surrounding area to create various foods. In Super Smash Bros. Brawl, he has this ability as his final smash. So you could say he's a chef. He puts on the hat, he clearly knows what he's doing, and he adds spices to the pot. It can only be assumed that the Smash Bros. version of Kirby has evolved to a point where he can retain abilities he has gained time and time again. Since Kirby is all about the headgear, you can tell it's go time when he puts on the chef's hat. Since he has the hat on, he likely unlocks all of his internal knowledge about cooking, making him a master chef for that short period of time. Plus, it's pretty epic hearing the echo of him clanking together those pans to bring his opponents into the pot. So while Kirby may not be a full-time chef, he equates to one for that 7 second period after breaking a flashing ball. I mean, what other chefs does Super Smash Bros have? Mr. Game & Watch? Heh. <laughs> All he does is flip a frying pan with sausages and fish that never land back into the pan. That's not cooking, it's just making a mess. And considering Cooking Mama has not yet been added to the roster of any Super Smash Bros game, Kirby is likely the closest we'll ever have to having a Super Smash Bros. cook. Number 4. Martial Law from Tekken Martial Law is a Chinese restaurant owner who constantly enters the Tekken tournaments and hopes to win the prize money to use for various purposes, but mostly to repay debts and improve his dojo. However, he is always getting additions to his story that add to why he is broke. For example, in Tekken 4, he established a formerly successful fast food chain called Marshall China that lost a franchise war. Despite his recent failures and multiple low points in his career, he seems to make pretty good food since his restaurant always has people in it, even if they are sometimes just his friends. 
and if he has to threaten some of the customers that complain about his food. He has become more of a comedic character as time has gone on, but that doesn't mean he's a funny fighter. He's based off Bruce Lee, so I would not take his fighting style lightly. He probably is a better chef than Bruce Lee, but also a worse actor. Number 3. Jam Kura Doberi from Guilty Gear Jam is truly outrageous. She entered the figurative battlefield with dangerous fighters more directly involved in the plot of Guilty Gear to look for cooking ingredients, or to get money to rebuild her restaurant, or to hunt down the person who burned down her restaurant and make them pay with her bare hands or feet. Depends which game you're playing. In the first game, she was looking to build her own restaurant, but needed the money, so she became a bounty hunter to make some cash. That's right, she entered one of the most dangerous professions to be able to invest in her dream. That's dedication. However, I feel there may have been a better option. You can't just wait tables for a few more months? Come on, you can do this! Some restaurant owner could find a use for that. Anyway, in Guilty Gear XX, we see she finally has her restaurant up and running after successfully receiving her bounty. This is a game where a mystery person burns down her restaurant and she decides to hunt down this person to make them pay. So she takes matters into her own hands quite a lot when dealing with her cooking career. While none of her attacks really relate to cooking, her key motivation is based on her restaurant. So if it wasn't for her primary aspirations, we would never know how great of a fighter jam is. Because of that, she gets a high ranking from me despite her more standard attacks that don't reference cooking. As an added bonus, after she gets her restaurant, she is still seen acting as a waitress in her in-game intros and outros, bringing out meals that she prepared. So she does more than just cook behind the closed doors of the kitchen. Number 2, El Fuerte from Street Fighter. El Fuerte is a legend. He enters the stage magnificently, holding a frying pan and yelling at super dynamic cooking time, a lot more emphatically than I just said it. After yelling that, he proceeds to fight an opponent, which by definition is not cooking, but that just shows his dedication to and love for his occupation as a chef. Yes, he's a real life chef when not fighting. He probably has the least needed plotline in Street Fighter 4, but that doesn't mean we can't love it. He enters the fighting tournament to discover what the other fighters eat to improve his restaurant. At least, I think it's his restaurant. His Super Street Fighter 4 plot is basically the same. Both arcade mode endings involve El Fuerte taking information he gathered from other fighters about their favorite delicacies and doing the only logical thing, combining them. What do you get when you mix E Honda's Chanko Stew and Zangief's Borscht? Exactly what you might expect. But he added spices? That always makes things better. Right, Kirby? So I guess that journey kind of made things worse for him since he's not good at combining ingredients. He thinks adding chocolate to bad tasting stew will make it sweeter. How did he get this far in life as a chef? Then again, I'm not a chef, so maybe he's onto something. He also joined the tournament to improve his Lucha Libre skills, but that has nothing to do with being a chef, so that doesn't matter. Or does it? That's right. All of El Fuerte's special moves involve cooking, sort of. They're named after foods, usually indigenous to Mexico. Habanero Dash, Fajita Buster, Quesadilla Bomb, Tostada Press, and the list gets more delicious. So there you have it. It's hard to get any more chef-themed than that. Unless his outfit reflected it, but that would be a bit too much. Or would it? El Fuerte has an alternate costume where he is basically in his full chef's outfit, with a fancy new hat and the mask intact, so he retains his Lucha Libre theme. Now, could he possibly get any more chef-themed? Well, maybe if his name represented something having to do with cooking, but that would just be silly. And in fact, it doesn't. It just translates to the strong one. I've gotta say, that's a pretty uncreative name. It might sound cool if you're not a Spanish speaker, but when you think about it, the name is kind of generic. That's like having a character who's maybe a, like a humanoid lizard and just naming him Reptile. But that's, uh, oh, sorry. Well, the name doesn't matter. It's what's in your heart. 
and what's in El Fuerte's heart is the burning passion of a chef and a wrestler whose heart oven is preset to 450 degrees with the front burners on to prepare the greatest meal of his life. Number 1. Who is the chef to end all chefs? In fighting games, that is. Number 1. Bravo from Chaos Code. Bravo was once a famous Italian chef, but after a falling out with his cooking master, he decided he wanted to specialize in Chinese food. He became a well-known chef for superbly mixing Italian and Chinese cuisine. But that all changed when his customers attacked each other with arguments and ruined his restaurant. With his business destroyed, he decided to set out and join the battle for Chaos Code to get his reward so he can rebuild his restaurant. So if he does not win this tournament, he loses his restaurant. His livelihood as a chef depends on him winning these fights. El Fuerte could at least not win the tournament and still keep his job, but if Bravo does not win, he may be forced to retire or at least take a break from manning his restaurant to raise money to rebuild a new restaurant. And while El Fuerte names his normal wrestling techniques after food, Bravo literally fights you by preparing food or at least with material for food preparation. He takes his theme seriously and since he's saving his restaurant, he uses the tools he would likely use at that restaurant. Even his pre-fight artwork has him tasting soup out of a ladle. Not only can he flip his opponents in a frying pan or take out a link of sausages as a weapon, but he will literally prepare a full meal and set the table just to throw it at the opponent for the sake of dramatic effect. And damage. Lots of damage. The fact that this fully set table is basically prepared in an instant is a great sign for how fast he can likely serve customers at a restaurant. I don't know if he prepares all these dishes before the fight or if we cannot just see how fast he really works, but the sheer amount of restaurant related items in each attack is ridiculously awesome, or awesomely ridiculous. And he has some magical ability to summon his restaurant with a horde of waitresses. So I guess he has this traveling restaurant gig taken care of if he ever wants to enter the food truck business. Of course I don't have to point out how his outfit reflects his profession. It's actually pretty tight on him. I guess he just wants to show off he's going to the gym. He is a grappler and bulky bodies are generally traits of fighting game grapplers. So go on and win this tournament with Bravo. His restaurant depends on it and you'll enjoy showing your opponents what it's like if they ever try to dine and dash on him. And don't worry, he will get a chance to rebuild his restaurant if he wins and get a chance to take on his master that does not want him to pursue his cookery-based dreams. So, what do you think? Who is your favorite chef in a fighting game? Let me know. Are there any chefs that I forgot on this list? Also let me know. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video.